Hi, I'm Dr. Felice Gersh, your integrative OBGYN physician. And today I'm going to talk about a really interesting topic called adrenal fatigue. Is it real? What does it mean? Well, to begin, let's talk about what the adrenal glands are. Well, there's a pair of them. They sit on top of the kidneys in the flank, in the back area. They're really quite small and they're really critically important. So they make a variety of hormones, steroid hormones, like cortisol and aldosterone. And they make other hormones as precursors to other hormones. They make the androgens, D-H-E-A-S, which could get converted to DHEA and others down to testosterone. The adrenal gland contributes 25% of all the testosterone circulating in the female body. So it's a very, very critically important gland. And what about adrenal fatigue? Well, this is a really important subject. There really is nothing that is truly adrenal fatigue. Now, sometimes words are used and words matter and they give the wrong impression, but there is something going on that represents what adrenal fatigue is talking about. So let's go into that. Well, the stress response was described some time ago. And in the stress response, the body becomes very highly reactive to survive a stress event. Now, the body was designed, evolved for an acute stress, like you're being chased by a wild tiger or you're hit by a car or you see something scary or you're infected with a pathogen like a bacteria, a virus. So something stressful has happened, but it's not supposed to be ongoing. The body is not really equipped for endless stress. It's really designed for acute stress. When you have acute stress, part of the stress response is producing a higher amount of that adrenal hormone called cortisol. Now, cortisol is critically important. In fact, it's the only hormone in the body that you will die if you don't have any in your body for 24 hours. It's really important. But if you have too much of it, too prolonged amount of prolonged production of it at high levels, that is harmful because it's designed to be catabolic, break down tissues. But that's really important if you're going to survive, like you have to use your own body tissues because if you're in a very stressful situation, you're probably not gonna sit down and relax and eat. So what are you gonna do if you can't eat? Well, you're gonna cannibalize your own body. Catabolism is what that's all about. But you don't want that to go on endlessly because then your body is in a breakdown state. Well, what if this goes on for a really long time? You're not going to feel very good. You're going to be tired. You're going to feel achy. Things are going to just not work right. Your brain is going to be foggy. You're going to have poor quality sleep. So that's what they are referring to when you have so-called adrenal fatigue. Originally, what they thought was your adrenal glands from being stressed for so long and producing all that cortisol inappropriately because we're not really being chased by a wild tiger. We're not really sick all the time. We're just stressed out. You know, life is stressful. It could be a spousal problem. It could be a work problem, a kid problem. You know, maybe you're living next to a crappy neighbor with lots of loud noise, like they're banging on the wall all the time. So the bottom line is whatever the stressor is, if it's ongoing, and your body is putting out all that cortisol, and your body is in a stress response, then the thought was that you can actually burn out your adrenal gland, that it's just going to like poop out. It's like, I'm done with this, and it's going to go into this fatigue state. Well, that isn't really what happens. So the words are not really right, because the adrenal gland is not just pooping out and just saying, I've had it, and now I'm going to stop making cortisol. I am worn out. That isn't what it is. The body simply starts to downregulate the production of cortisol in some people after a very long period of chronic stress. Let's just talk about the symptoms and what it really means. When people use the word adrenal fatigue, just realize the adrenal gland is not just wiped out and can't work anymore, but your body as a whole is in a breakdown status. And that is really total body fatigue. I now think of what is called adrenal fatigue 
as massive circadian rhythm dysfunction because virtually everyone who is in a chronic state of stress will have really poor quality sleep. They become very dysregulated with their autonomic nervous system and they often will get vasoconstriction, their temperature regulation goes off, their digestive system goes off and it starts with the state of circadian rhythm dysfunction because poor sleep is virtually always part of a chronic stress situation. When was the last time that you felt really stressed out and you went to bed and felt incredibly refreshed in the morning? Like that was the best night's sleep I ever had. It's too bad I'm like under massive stress, but I slept like a baby. That doesn't happen. It's just not the way we are. Well, once you get in a chronic stressed out state and you're not getting quality sleep, you're going to have circadian rhythm dysfunction. So remember, what is the circadian rhythm? It's the 24-hour rotation of Earth on its axis, and we humans have 90% of all the genes in our body are either clock genes or clock gene-related genes. So we are totally timed creatures. You may think that you could just do anything anytime that you like. Well, you can, but your body will pay the price. You have clock genes that determine when are you best suited to eat, to sleep, to exercise, to everything, because everything is on the 24-hour clock. Well, so is cortisol. I mean, cortisol is amazingly circadian. Well, what I have found is that when people have so-called adrenal fatigue, but it's really not the adrenal gland that's burnt out. It's like all of you is kind of in a burnt out state that if you look at their cortisol production, it's really messed up because they have circadian rhythm dysfunction. So when you have your clock genes like all becoming misprogrammed, you're not getting enough sunlight, you're not getting enough sleep, you're eating at the wrong times, you're like binge eating at night and you're just snacking during the day, or maybe you're not eating at all and then you're eating all one meal a day. So you're just totally in a stressed out state and your body is in a breakdown mode. What I have found is that you get flip circadian rhythm. So in the morning, the cortisol should come out high and it makes you awake. It increases your appetite. And when that's happening, you start burning fat because most people aren't eating the instant they wake up. And by the way, that high cortisol in the morning shuts down the melatonin, which is also very rhythmic circadian and should peak at 2 a.m. and then it comes down during the day. Well, the high cortisol in the morning that shoots up, it should downregulate the melatonin. And then at night, your cortisol should be very low and the melatonin goes up. Well, that rhythm is messed up in people with chronic stress. And so the rhythms of the whole body, the sleep cycles, the appetite cycles, all of those cycles are messed up. So this is how I see it. There is no real adrenal fatigue in that the adrenal gland is just doing what it's told to do by the brain, but the adrenal gland itself isn't sick, okay? So it's not the adrenal gland that's at fault or like burnt out, like it can't work anymore. It's the brain. The brain is really stressing out and the master clock in the brain is shifting. It's not regulating properly the circadian rhythm because of stress and altered hormones and altered sleep. So you have this dysregulation of your rhythms of your body. Your clock genes are off, digestion is off, brain fog sets in, you feel achy all over. You just feel chronically exhausted. You do not have refreshing sleep. Your melatonin production is suppressed at night and you're on the path to total body breakdown. That is why stress, stress is such a huge cause of real disease and real illness, which can encompass any organ system of the body. This is not a hypochondriac who's having all these symptoms. This is really a person who is ill. Chronic stress can cause real illness, even death. So I know the word adrenal fatigue, that expression isn't real 
the adrenal gland isn't broken. The adrenal gland isn't incapable. It's not wiped out. It's not pooping out, but your body is. So if you hear the word adrenal fatigue, no, it's not about your adrenal. It's about everything. It's about chronic stress, stress from something. Remember, stress can be anything that dysregulates your emotion and then your entire physiology. Chronic stress is really what adrenal fatigue is talking about. It's a rule out. You know, you got to rule out everything else. You got to rule out you don't have lymphoma. You don't have a cancer. You know, you got to rule out you don't have hypothyroidism. Of course, you never just say this is a stress response. You have to rule out everything else, right? It's not something else like I just mentioned. But when it really isn't something else, and it is chronic stress, then I don't even care if the words adrenal fatigue are used. I just want people to know it's not about the adrenal gland. It's about chronic stress and the damage it does to the entire body. So it's important to know what's going on and the seriousness that adrenal fatigue is trying to describe the chronic stress damage to the body and all of the symptoms that are a result of chronic stress, which can affect virtually every organ system of the body. Everyone needs to address chronic stress. Everyone needs to have proper sleep, proper nutrition. Everyone needs a mind-body practice. For me, I love relaxation baths. Sometimes I put in magnesium salts called Epsom salts. Sometimes I burn a candle, an organic one. Sometimes I actually just read a magazine in my relaxation bath. Sometimes I just close my eyes. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes I listen to a podcast. But for me, that is my downtime, my relaxation time. It's like my form of meditation. Find what works for you, whether it's tapping, progressive relaxation, guided meditations, some other form, prayer meditation, exercise meditation, biofeedback, using aromatherapy. Find what works for you. Adrenal fatigue is not real in that the adrenal gland is not damaged, but stress is real and stress does damage you. So hope to see you again soon. Take care.